Ready to do this? I'm ready. I'm ready if you're ready. Oh, cheers. glasses on dude what's up guys it's joel benavides with the squawk out podcast it is 8 48 p.m on the 11th of november 2020 and we're joined by sir would you uh introduce yourself by name please <laughs> what's up joel this is reggie reggie thanks for, thanks for having me out joel appreciate it uh yeah we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna brush up on our on our ta and if you're tuning in, if you discovered my podcast after it became open format, then we're kind of going back to old format, old school for a little bit. And that's just because um, there's some interesting things happening in the market. And uh, and that's kind of how me and this guy know each other. And uh, so we're going to kind of brush up on on our technical analysis of market and stock trends together. And uh, why don't you why don't you start Reggie by uh, recounting how we met? Right. So um, basically, me and Joel met. Uh, we used to work together um, at a hospital, and Joel was the one that got me into the whole cryptocurrency. So we would come into work, and Joel would start talking about crypto. Um, he started showing me uh, technical analysis. Uh, charting. Uh, Don't forget crypto music videos too, because we had that, right? Oh man, I forgot all about that. Yeah, dude. The, um, the, the cri crypto enthusiasts make like the best music videos, especially Coin Bros. Do you remember them? Coin Bros. That was that the uh, guys from uh, Twitch. No, no, no. But we did talk about Twitch real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so there was this there was this channel on Twitch. And it's not defunct now. I've actually, ta I actually talked to them and okay. I was going to do something like, I think I was going to come on their show, but oh, nice. We're nice. Yeah. Cause we're talking about, uh, discord and he was talking about, how he was going to start it up. So this, so there's like in the, in the early years of 2017, when everybody was like going crazy over crypto and there was this whole subculture building up around Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, there was, um, two like active channels on twitch one of them was crypto traders tv that one had like the highest views and this other one that me and reggie would listen to all the time was called uh, uh crypto world news right and these guys like we worked late at night right oh yeah we had the uh, graveyard shift man so we worked overnight yeah, yeah so we're so we're overnight and we're like listening to like these guys and they would clown and we would just <laughs> I, we would have like a good time like listening to them and then kind of like watching Bitcoin, learning about TA. And so like we had a good time, right? I mean, it was, yeah, it was good, good, good old days. Yeah, the good old days. Yeah. So um, so we're going to kind of try to relive that, I guess, today. Um, Reggie came over a little while ago and we uh, talked about we, we kind of did some prep and uh, it's showing on the screen right up there. Um, so we are going to brush up on our TA. That kind of goes with what we we're talking about a little while ago. Um, with charting. So we're going to do some charting, some actual charting, uh, and take a real close look at, uh, Apple. I think we said, right. Right. I wanted to take a look at Apple. Um, any others Apple and there's actually, I have a, um, a couple of stocks we can look at. Um, there's a QQQ. That's the ticker symbol. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's a, a ETF. ETF. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I want to take a look at uh, maybe those two and see, um, you can tell me what you see. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of YouTube uh, traders that are like real big on ETF. I think Sang Lucci, I don't know if he's still hot on it, but I think he was for a while. You know, it's a really popular, it's a really popular financial vehicle. And I think it's because it's so liquid, like a lot of people own Triple Q. So, uh, but I don't know what, what uh, financial products are inside the ETF. Like, do you know? Um, off the top of my head, I want to say there's 10... And I might be wrong. I'll have to look uh, look it up here. In a Is minute. it like the tech, the big tech, or it's the big tech? So you're talking about um, the Googles, uh, Microsoft, um, who else? Microsoft, Google. I think Nvidia is in there. Holdings. Um, I want to say uh, Tesla. 
Is Tesla in there? I think Tesla might be Tesla in there. Tesla is, I think, considered a technology company, even though it's a car company. Yeah, Tesla, I think, might be in there as well. Um, also, Apple's in there. Yeah, so like heavy hitters. Heavy hitters, yeah. Do, do you know what it, well, look at it in a little bit, but what, do you know off the top of your head what it's trading at right now? It or is, what neighborhood? Yeah, it's, I think it's, I want to say it's right around $119. Oh, that's not bad at all. Like, I wonder if like people that are trading on like e-trade and 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 buying or like robin hood and buying micro shares are are trying are, are getting micro you know it's just because a lot of younger people probably yeah are going to listen to this initially so um if you're doing micro shares you probably want to get micro shares of um well you it? could just do the said companies right at different yeah levels. yeah um what's uh, amazon because amazon is selling at like over three thousand dollars so if you got micro shares of amazon I mean, after a while, you might get. Yeah, we should look at Amazon, dude, because like, like I was saying earlier, how I think Tesla is, might be overvalued because people might like falsely be believing that they're buying into by proxy buying into SpaceX and stuff like that. We should look at Amazon because I wouldn't be surprised if something similar is going like, I mean, it's just. I mean, maybe it's. Maybe it, like I just don't have the foresight, but it's difficult to imagine these companies are valued so highly. We haven't had companies like this in existence ever. So, True. you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's kind of like lo looking up at a tall building. You know what I mean? It's like you kind of like l get dizzy looking at it almost, you know, in a, in a financial, in the financial sense of the word, the analytical sense. Anyway, we can get into that in a bit. Um, we're going to look at, so we're going to look at crypto we'll, briefly later. We'll look at stocks initially. Um, last time we got together, we talked about, uh, quiver, uh, quiver quantitative, right? Right. And so you brought that to me, like recap what that is. Basically we were both kind of green to it, but we want to talk about it. Cause we saw an article on Benzinga about it a little while ago. Too, yeah. Right. Um, I haven't had a lot of chance to mess around with the website, but if you get a chance, um, definitely check it out. Uh, it was pretty interesting, but basically they um, scrape the website. Um, they scrape different websites for data, mm -hmm. um, data that you can use um, for 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 trading. I guess making trading decisions. Yeah. So it also has a lot of data as far as if you want to take a look at uh, people in Congress, so uh, senators. Um, if you want to see which senators are out there um, making trades. Uh -huh. It's going to have that information. Um, if you want to see uh, which sectors are getting um, certain government contracts, um, you can go on Quiver Quantitative, and it's going to have that information on there as well. Um, so it has a lot of different information on there. We have to pull it up later to kind of look at it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're definitely going to pull up uh, Quiver. One of the other things, and we talked about ETFs and petrol. Oh, I was going to tell my, once we start talking about uh, or look at the ETFs, I want to talk about uh, uh, my experience with uh, petroleum and defense. Because at the time we got into into the, uh, I got into ETFs, like I made a, I made a decent amount of money on petroleum and and defense ETFs. And it's just, but it was against my like idealism at the time, I guess you could say. And so that's like a reality, right? Like, I don't know. Do you have any, do you think you have any like serious issues with certain companies out there that you're like, yeah, I might make some money, but I'm not going to trade that. Yeah. Um, it's <laughs> funny you ask. Cause I was thinking, you know, a lot of people right now are kind of sitting and waiting on the whole cannabis, uh, thing right now uh -huh. so i think rhode island i'm not rhode, I, I can't remember what state another state just went ahead and agreed to legalize cannabis so I know a lot of people want to get on that bandwagon and start buying stocks um yeah. you know investing in companies that have cannabis but i don't <clears throat> think that until more states jump on board it's not going to take off until that happens i think once more states uh jump on board and legalize it mm -hmm. then i think it might take off yeah. Yeah. Uh, the cannabis thing again, dude, like how over, like, are there, ET, do you know if there are ETFs that exist? Like, um, they have the, ETFs for everything. I wouldn't be surprised, right? man. They yeah, probably do. I just do. don't know if anything's like popular right now yeah. or what's, what's kicking. I'm so out of the stock world. Um, but yeah. Uh, so I guess 
let's uh let's get to looking at that um i'm gonna pull up uh trading view so that we can look at this and um is trading view your go-to do you ever use bar bar chart or anything else i like trading view though yeah i I like trading view i have like an account with them um and so just so i can get certain indicators that i otherwise wouldn't be able to get you know what i mean um so that's kind of cool uh let's uh let's situate ourselves here um so that i can pull up some of these stocks So, um, if you want, let me, uh, I'm just going to maximize your window on the flat screen up there. Yeah, go for it, man. So as we were talking about earlier, um, Joel got me into the whole crypto thing and then I kind of stepped back and walked away from it for a little bit and then... I started getting back in um, stock market and I'm a total beginner. I'm a newbie. I'm still learning. That's why I'm here so I can learn some stuff. Um, but I guess as most of you know, it's kind of like you have money sitting in a savings account and the bank is using your money to make money, but yet you're making pennies for what the, you know, for the money that you put in a bank. I'm, so I was thinking to myself, you know what? I need to invest this money and start getting better returns than I am with my bank. Right on. Yeah. So, yeah. What What's a savings account now? Like <laughs> half a percent, a quarter of a Something ten, like that, something, man. Yeah. They're, they're, they're raping us, dude. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's and then not to mention like the devalue, the, the, you know, the dollar and, you know, other macroeconomic things that we have no idea what's going on. So, um, <clears throat> so let's start, let's start with, uh, I just want, I just want to cover Bitcoin real quick. Cause we're looking at Bitcoin here Sure, sure. and obviously a lot's been happening lately and we should talk about why also why people should be, and you've heard me say this over and over again. You, you know, this people should be cautious when crypto gets overvalued, when people start pouring in, in droves to buy Bitcoin, that's when the big wigs start selling off slowly sure. at first, not to shock the market, but FOMO. Yeah, FOMO, exactly. And so uh, that's one of the things that like uh, whales in the market, you know, big traders rely on is for for like, uh, uh, you know, just normal average Joe's coming in, bringing in their liquidity so they can start selling off their position. Like they have like uh, their trading methods or antithetical i guess if you want to use a big Anti word what <laughs> hey hey i don't understand what you're saying <laughs> like they're fucking <laughs> they're going they're going backwards you know what i mean like they're 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 buying when we're selling and they're selling when we're buying you know what i mean like that and they're making all the fucking money they just know how to do it in a way that's like gradual doesn't freak people out so people are still buying into the fomo while they start selling like they're selling just enough to keep it going up you know what i mean right but as soon as they're done selling off their position you know that 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 other side of the trade is gone it shoots up it goes parabolic and then and then it crashes it's like a game dude it's like they they, they know how to play the game better yeah dude exactly it's um uh, it, and i've talked about this with my cousin who's been on before you know what i mean and uh and i and i went into detail about like how all of it goes down it's basically what i just said like i just went into further detail like they're selling while we're buying and the more they buy the more they sell because they can afford to do that because it doesn't shock the price you know what i mean as soon as they're out you know the price becomes volatile and then you know there's a period where it begins to crash so i mean it's market cycles it's like basic shit. once you start like studying this stuff or reading an article here and there you'll get to like dow theory and like just uh elliott wave and market cycles and stuff like that um and those are all good things to look up if anybody's listening you want to know about dow theory dow theory is basically the idea that you're not in an uptrend until you get a higher high and a higher low and that could be applicable and we'll talk about this later like on many time frames so you know if you're an investor you're looking at the daily what we call the daily chart each candle on the chart is a day um 
you want to talk about the daily chart, the weekly chart, the monthly chart. Uh, but you know, if you want to be a day trader or dip your toes into swing trading where you're getting in and out on a monthly basis, that's a different, you know, set of risks. That's a different time frame. That's, you know, so every, everything changes based on time. It's not just, um, it's not just, you know, the price of the vehicle, you know, we have the price of the vehicle on one axis, but people forget that time is on the other axis and, and it's valuable. It's important to look at those time frames. You know what I mean? And not to exclude it. If you're an investor and you're looking on the daily chart or the weekly chart, you don't want to exclude, exclude what necessarily what's happening on the four hour chart or the 15 minute chart. You want to go in there. If you suspect that there might be a turnaround soon, you know, going into the four hour chart or the 15 minute chart might signal you to like signal you to exactly when it's going to happen, or just might give you just more information, you know, and, and more information isn't always like better when you're doing technical analysis. Sometimes it can overwhelm you. Into analysis a, paralysis. Analysis paralysis. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, uh, let's, let's get in here into the weeds. I'm going to get rid of this Fibonacci. Uh, because that was for this price range and we're not we're not there right now um, so you can see here we get these like recurring lines of support and resistance right and I I said at the beginning that I was gonna keep this simple and I really should right basically we're looking at the price going up and down just to kind of recap on some basics sometimes you'll see a pattern in the tops and bottoms where the price rises and turns around or drops and turns around so you get these repetitive patterns and over a long enough time frame you can see sometimes they're shapes sometimes they're like horizontal lines that define like a certain area and people remember these these price levels and they start to get anxious when price approaches those levels and so we can see right here back in 2017 on bitcoin there was a lot of um a lot of trading going on at that 13,780 level. Um, and by the way, we're looking at Bitcoin on Kraken. Um, so ticker symbol XBT USD. Uh, but we have like these price levels at, at, at 13 K and it seems to have repeated into the future, even up until next month. You know what I mean? Same thing with what we call support, which is these bottoms. You know what I mean? You get price hanging around certain levels. And so some of them are diagonal because they're dropping further over time. Some of them are are going down. Some of them are going up. But then sometimes we have horizontal levels. And you can see here, you know, I, I've had these lines drawn for some time. And, uh, and so you can see that price will tend to either turn around or get thin around these these, let, these price levels. Let, let me ask you a question yeah. about the price price levels real quick. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. That's why you're here. Okay. So I noticed, I don't know if... It got all angry. I'm like, <laughs> damn it. That's no. <laughs> shut up, fool. You're here to learn. <laughs> I'm the teacher. No. <laughs> you do what I say. <laughs> Get over here no. on the lap, Reggie. We're going to work this out. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So on the Fibonacci... Um, well, that... that well, you see where the the um the that looks like there's a, a double bottom where the yellow line is go up um right there. Right here. Okay, yeah, yeah. So is that would you would you consider that like um a double bottom and then cuz the second the second one I guess goes dips lower or it, it breaks the line and then it shoots back up. Is that a double bottom or no? Um or is that am I just like way off base? It well, it could be it could be a double like you're talking about so you're for, for the double bottom you're referencing this point right here right and what other point the one to the left this okay I, um there are a what's called asymmetrical double bottoms and double tops you know what i mean and then and then there's uh symmetrical ones where the where the one in the middle is like bigger you know what I mean? Like a triple bottom or a triple top where the one in the middle is bigger. Those are called head and shoulders, shoulders okay. and reverse head and shoulders, right? Right, right. So there, there can be symmetrical and asymmetrical ones. There's a, there's a clever little tool over here on the left. Let me see if I can find it. 
Where is it? Um, and I'm I, I might not be using it correctly. Fuck, what is it? Um, I think it's just called double bottom and double top, and I'm just not. Here we go. So head and shoulders, right? They might not have one for uh, double bottom and double top, but um, like there was a head and shoulders over here on the four hour chart. I remember back in the day, but like, let's just say you would just draw it out and connect it. And if you got that bottom line matching, see how it's matching right there. You'll get your left shoulder, your right shoulder, and it'll only like, match up and give you the triangle if that bottom line is like perfect you know what i mean and so this tool can be helpful like for figuring some of those things out what is that uh, called again it's just a head and shoulders tool and it's on yeah it's on the on the tool bar on but um i wouldn't like i didn't see double bottom a lot of the times it's a little more symmetrical than that uh but i mean yeah i guess you could consider it a double bottom there's also like um i can't remember what they're called but like it's like a sim single bottom and a single top where it spikes up and then shoots back down and then the overall trend reverses oh, so that okay. i mean that's kind of what this is i guess i can't remember off the top of my head what it's called it's like if you have a really long and like golfing red candle that shoots down well that's not or, even on the candle level that's just on the trend level you know okay. what i mean or like you know there that's another thing that we can talk about in tas is um is candle pattern so like when we zoom way in and we look at one of these little vertical candles in here right um there are different patterns that take place over two or three candles that'll point to a, a reversal. Right. So, okay. you know that right. that falling that big red candle that's like a falling knife, you know what i mean? So like and what? that see and then like it man it can get really confusing dude like there's also you know there's like uh where you get a big red one and then an equally large green one right after that there sometimes you get those with a little bit of consolidation in between and in crypto that's called the bart simpson because that happens a lot in crypto where okay. it doesn't really happen <laughs> yeah and, and you were saying earlier like crazy shit happens in crypto it's volatile yeah um to answer your question, your initial question, we should talk about Fibonacci's first, right? Like, a, let me give like a little prelude on Fibonacci. Do you remember at all, like how I summed up Fibonacci's? Um, I know you take the um, highest price point to the lowest price point. Uh huh. Yeah, the high. So and, yeah. And then the um, in a large movement. Okay, in a large movement. Uh huh. Okay. Then the other lines in between are like support and resistance, so you know where the price uh, is gonna like fall to yeah exactly so like when you measure that large movement it puts lines in between that top line and that bottom line right and these are based off of a, like a kind of a magical number called um called fibonacci uh, or the fibonacci sequence or the fibonacci ratio and so uh i'll try to make this like short and not boring i'm gonna fail but uh so like if you get zero and yeah i know <laughs> if you get if you get zero and one and you add it together you get one right now you have three numbers in your little formula you have zero and then you have the one and then on the other side of the equal sign is one again you have a pattern now which all you do is you repeat this pattern you add the last two numbers together to get the next number okay. so, so the last two numbers in zero plus one equals one is one, one and one right so you add that up to get to the next number which would be two, two right and then in this sequence we end up with three five eight thirteen so on and so forth once you get to like really large numbers and the golden ratio or the fibonacci ratio is one of those numbers like pi that has a decimal that goes on forever the reason that is is because you can keep on adding up numbers in that sequence and get to a more and more precise number. You know what I mean? It's never, it never ends because you can always make it more precise by adding another number. And the ratio is the last number in the sequence compared to the size of the number before it, right? So, um, so basically, once you get to a precise enough number, you basically end up with a ratio of one to 1.1618. 
right? And this number, this fraction, one over one point six one eight, is is uh, is is, is uh, present throughout all of creation. That's why people call it the divine ratio because it's kind of like the ratio that God or you know the universe used to make everything. So if you look at the swirls in uh, in a in a snail shell, you know the next swirl is exactly like uh, one times one point six one eight larger than the last swirl, and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? The arms of the galaxy follow the same uh, the same format. Uh, when you look at the the speed at which rabbits reproduce. They it's will based reproduce. On Fibonacci? It's based off of Fibonacci. Like uh, the branches spreading on certain trees and plants are based off of Fibonacci. Uh, and so somewhere along the line, I think it was like a farmer that was trading rice futures in Japan in the 1600s, figured out that you could apply this ratio this that this Italian came up with to prices in the stock market and you'll get these clever levels, right? The main one here is 0 0.618. You'll see that it's like a fraction of Fibonacci, right? So you'll you'll get these large movements. For example, if you look at the screen right here, this was kind of when COVID started popping off. Price on Bitcoin was 10,281.50 approximately, right? When it got to its worst, it dropped down to $4,500 again approximately, right? So what I did was I took a Fibonacci of this level. I measured the top of this and I took it to the bottom, right? Because you always go from top to bottom. And it projected these ratios, which are basically harmonics of the Fibonacci sequence. And it extrapolates it from zero to one and or it goes from zero to one with all the, you know, uh, fractals or fractions in between. But then it also extrapolates it to 1.618 right here, this blue line, and then 2.618 and so on and so forth, right? And so we can get kind of these key levels. You see right here, because no, uh, this is basically November, and the price has been climbing during November and, and late October. You can see there's more candles right here because this, this was a key Fibonacci level. There was turbulence right, there. Right. It, the stock market and financial vehicles are complex systems, much like rabbits fucking is part of a complex natural system. Like... Uh, you know, the arms of the galaxy and the way gravity works is part of a complex system. Interwoven into... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking wove, dude. <laughs> yeah, hey, this is pretty deep. For those of you that are still uh, awake. Yeah, dude, I, it can be dry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's why I brought you here, dude. I cannot talk about this shit without fucking getting dry. Okay, so let me ask you a quick question then. Okay, yeah, then you need I, to interrupt me more, dude. Like, go ahead. Like, no, no, I, you're on a roll, man. This is good stuff because I, I, I don't, I don't know this stuff. So, it broke through um, that level of um, resistance. Yeah. So the next level, it's possible that it might. You've got to get really close to that mic. It's possible that it might get up to the to the next level uh -huh. since it broke through. Yeah, it's possible. Now, this is kind of like we kind of have to start looking at different things. I could draw a Fibonacci from the last high, which was 12,600 approximately, to the last low, which was around 9,900, 10K, somewhere on there. Right? We can take a Fibonacci here, a temperature, so to speak. Right. Okay. And we'll have new levels. Let me do that real quick. Let me pull up my Fibonacci tool. This is all. See, it always goes from top to bottom, whether you're going like measuring like a trend, like into the future or into the past, always top to bottom. I mean, different people have different ways of using it. That's not like hard and fast, but let's zoom in here. So these are daily candles. Each little you're, you're can on the daily chart. Yeah, I'm on okay. the daily chart. Okay. So, and this is applicable to you because you're looking at, terms of investing of buying and selling over what like a year or two initially um, maybe the stocks well stocks i have now i'm thinking uh between two to five years two to five years okay yeah so this is appropriate for you so we're gonna measure this high i'm gonna say that this is a high and i'm gonna say that this is the low over here right you can see right here it's projecting this as a line which is kind of in line with previous measurements 
right? But we had multiple kind of like levels of complication right here. You know what I mean? Um, it's extrapolating it. Let me, let me try something else. Um, so because I'm going to say that this was the high and this is the low. Oh, wait, hold on. There's no really hard and fast rules with Fibonacci. Sorry. Uh... Sorry, yeah, there's a little bit of dead space here because I'm just figuring this out. If you're not watching, I apologize. Like, you can go to YouTube and get the same shit. Basically, like, there, like, there's a reason that it's stalling here. You know what I mean? There's probably some level. I don't know if it's this one or not, but there's something going on where it's where it's stalling here. Another thing is we talked about this uh, before we started the podcast. There's um. There's not a lot of history of Bitcoin trading at these price levels. You know what oh, I mean? Right. Like it has been up to 20K, but when you look at like the liquidity of or the or the or the volume of trading going on at 15K, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of hard and fast established price levels here. So we're gonna see a lot of volatility. We're gonna see swings up, possibly, you know, swings down. But right. that's why shit's moving quickly. Makes sense. It, you know what I mean? Price yeah. tends to gravitate towards price levels that have been traded a lot. You know what I mean? And you get the volatility okay. when it breaks out of those price levels. Makes sense. You know, and that just kind of goes with like uh, investor sentiment, stuff like that. Let's move on to, um, you said earlier, and we can continue like the fucking technical analysis uh education as we go but let's use another example you were said you were trading verizon and what else um apple i wanted to look at uh i look at apple first right yeah all right let's pull this shit up like see yeah i don't trade apple so this isn't fucking oh it's because of the split right why do why did i think that it was trading higher it was trading higher than they did the split uh, when was that? Like September, mid September? Yeah. Something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that. Yeah. I, okay. I went down I to like, like, I remember it, I missed it, man. I, I was kind of not upset, upset, but it had went down to like $99. Mm -hmm. And I think I got in when it was like 117. I see. I see. All right. So step one, uh, with technical analysis, I'm going to look at a large enough time frame i guess that would be the month right and so it looks like we were just trading at all-time highs so i'm gonna put like a big flat horizontal i mean line right at the top i got this little magnet on over here to the left of the screen uh that i'm moving my cursor around and that's basically when you're looking at things like this far out um it's kind of hard to get that line right on there. So the magnet mode just kind of helps you like center in okay. at, that, at that exact price level. So um, unless there's like something horrible happens, I don't think we're going to reach bottom. So I'm not, I'm not even going to bother putting one of those lines at the bottom. But what, what I will do is I'll go get some more of these horizontal lines and I'm just going to change the color on this next one. That's a top that sort of acted like a bottom with this candle next to it. So basically for listeners, what we're doing here is uh, we're outlining, excuse me, we're outlining support and resistance zones, which is basically like, um, like um, levels where the uh, price turned around. You know, it's like it, it was climbing, it was climbing, it hit that level and then it turned around. Um, same thing with bottoms, you know, we're outlining these price points where price was dropping and dropping and dropping and then it turned around and oftentimes you get uh there's a saying in technical analysis where previous uh support uh, or a previous support uh becomes future resistance or vice versa you know it's just 
you're just basically saying that uh, price tends to turn around at these points, regardless of whether it's going up or down. Um, so we can see here some major points on the monthly chart of support and resistance. And those price levels with regards to Apple going back about four years is $24, $35, uh, 58 bucks, 80 bucks, and 137 bucks. And it actually gapped up. Uh, geez, when was it? was a slight gap up, but uh, June 1st. So, and that didn't happen a lot on the monthly chart. It was a, a small gap up, but that's a bullish sign. Um, so it may continue, it may continue to climb. I just, I don't know. Uh, but we'll know a little more when we start digging in. So, I'm at the monthly chart right now. We're going into the daily chart. So if you're watching, each candle on this chart represents one day. And we're looking at everything back to <clears throat> about November. So we're looking at about a year. And basically with Apple, the overall idea is that it's going up. You know, it went up uh, steadily, slowly and steadily up until February of 2020. And as we all know, that's when coronavirus hit. So we see a drop back down to this approximately $58 level. Uh, and that was in April of, of 2020, kind of also when the recovery started to happen. Right. Yeah. No. And, uh, we started having, I think problems in Texas around that area, but all in all things were climbing right up until the early September. Right. And you mentioned that that's when the stock split happened. Right. Well, or, the, or, was the, it a stock split or like, I'm not clear on the, on the, on the, on the, on the verbology, but like, cause I used to think that uh split is like when the, when the stock doubles, you so, know what I mean? The value is double the value or the price of the stock doubles. But I heard other people calling it a split and I understand that to mean like they're, they kind of cut it into two, right? Basically. Yeah. Like my understanding is, um, I don't, um, I, I don't, understand 100 percent like all the math that goes into how they figure it figure it out yeah but i man. know over the course of history i think apple has done four splits or five splits i'm going to say four but um yeah a lot of companies they'll do the stock split and so it'll be cheaper for the regular average joe guys like me and you to get yeah. in and buy stock yeah on some of those like maybe easier platforms or maybe like at a at a like a brokerage, like say something that has like a low cost, like a, it's not complicated, like TD Ameritrade or E-Trade or stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so anyway. But, but yeah, oh, before I forget, yeah, the stock split. And then also um, we were talking about this earlier. Um, I think I, th I had mentioned every September um, mm -hmm. Apple comes out with a new iPhone. So people right. were waiting and anticipating the new iPhone, but it got pushed back. So there were no sales of the new iPhone. The, I, the new iPhones don't come out actually until this week. So they have the new iPhones, which is like if you go to the um, 10K and look at it, I had a chance to review it a little bit. So the iPhone is Apple's best seller. That's where they make their money. Their but money, yeah. Yeah. So you notice the price. The did, price has been going up the last few days. Well, the price has gone up the past few days, but I'm kind of waiting. I don't know if it's going to go up even more because the new iPhones come out and then the new MacBooks with the new um, new uh, processors uh -huh. come out too. So, Well, let me show you something interesting that I was just noticing looking at this fucking thing, right? So we talked at the, like at the beginning about how you get these recurring lines of support and resistance. Sometimes they're horizontal. Right. Sometimes they're diagonal. But you kind of get this repetitive thing happening. And I'm not going to be inclusive with that wick. Oh, what the hell did I just do? I just added an alert I don't need. Okay, but see see what's happening here? So you said it's coming. It doesn't always wait till the end of the triangle to break out. Whether it's to the upside or the downside, it doesn't always wait. So you're saying that this is going down tomorrow? I haven't been following it. No, I'm when, saying... When does the, when is the, will the iPhone come out? The iPhone comes out um, thir Thursday. Thursday. So like today is so a week from today. No, this week. Wait, today's Wednesday? Yeah, yeah, today's Wednesday. Oh, okay. so tomorrow. So tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I said initially. Oh. 
So yeah, and if you if it was a week, I'd be like, uh, maybe we're gonna go down again before we break out to the upside. You know what I mean? Because these ten these things tend to break out either to the upside or the downside. Nobody knows, right? Right. Sometimes with some financial vehicles, the shape will tell you. You know what I mean? So like if it's more of a uh, a banner than it is a wedge then you know that might you know and and it was in an uptrend already that might point to it going up you know what i mean or it just depends really um on on what you're trading like because bitcoin is a wild animal you know what i mean it oh, doesn't yeah it yeah. doesn't it doesn't always follow the same rules that like stocks do uh but with this i'd say that that there's going to be a breakout soon like if i didn't know all that about the uh the iPhone, and I was just looking at this strictly on a technical analysis point of view. I was just looking at the chart. I would see this. I would see these kind of like uh, uh, overt uh, turnarounds in the market or in the price of Apple. And I'd say, okay, well, we have kind of a pattern forming right here with uh, resistance, and we have another pattern here forming in support. Whenever these lines converge or at some point near where they converge, there's a breakout either to the upside or the downside, Right. but you're going to get a breakout. So it's, it doesn't surprise me. In other words, that the fundamentals, IE the iPhones coming out tomorrow is pointing to a breakout. Right. And, uh, you know, who's to say that it's not a flop. You know what I mean? Who's to say they don't come out with something that looks like the iPhone three. And sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> dude. I have an iPhone three over there. Uh, it's right there next to my Apple two E. Do you see my Apple two E? No, 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 dude. Stop looking for a phone. <laughs> it's what that you... fucking clunky looking keyboard underneath all oh, those vinyls. What the heck? So the Apple two was the first Apple computer that came out, obviously after the Apple one, right? And the Apple one was a wooden box with computer chips that. Steve Jobs sold at at MIT. Okay, so that's an Apple II, e, which oh, wow. is basically like a like a revision or an upgrade to the Apple II. So it's like I think it's like mit- missing the H button, but it's you, badass. You need, you need to take a picture of that so everybody can see it. Yeah, that's I like- do. Well, I have a picture of like all that shit, but I need to get rid of that workbench because I'm gonna put another shelf in there. Anyway, I'm getting all fucking bougie about my studio. So anyway, going back to Apple here. The technicals point to a breakout, even if you didn't know that the Apple was going to come out again, like that sounds pretty fucking awesome. You know, the Apple, the the iPhone's coming out. So initially, like I would think breakout to the upside. But again, what if it sucks? You know what I mean? A lot of the times companies come out with a product and they're anticipating for it to be badass and everybody's like, "Ah," you know, and then it fucking goes to shit. So that could happen in that instance. Sometimes you get a false breakout. You get price settling, you know, above that triangle. But then you look at the volume. I bet you you if tomorrow or, you know, over the next couple of days, if there's no volume, you know, that could point to uh, weaknesses in the iPhone. So how much does um, so when Apple does the pre-sales for the iPhone, how much? How much does that factor into what you're seeing here? Is, oh. is, is, is it is it baked into what we're seeing already? The or? idea is that markets, we talked about this earlier before we started, the markets are efficient, right? In other words, even like the, like everybody's got all the available news, right? Even the, uh, even the big whales that get news a little bit early yeah. are placing investments based off of the early information that they have. So that's the idea of markets being efficient. What you're seeing when you look at price action is the truth. The the best version of truth available to all the people that are going to get it. So the short answer is yes. Like the pri- the 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 everything is baked into the price. Okay. okay. You okay. use the term baked in. You've heard this before somewhere. Yeah, I heard because, it some Yeah, I just it just popped into my I've heard it somewhere before, but yeah. Yeah, cuz everybody always says it's baked into the price. It's like <laughs> how does it <laughs> How did we settle on the idea that we were going to bake this bitch? Like why isn't it fried into the price? Why uh, How come it just can't be mixed in? Let's just fucking take the solar panels out or the fucking solar <laughs> ovens out, dude. 
take the fucking comal and throw some tortillas on there <laughs> oh, and like God. we'll we fucking go. roll we'll roll it into <sighs> the I'm starting to get hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was gonna order pizza before, but you were like, no, nah, don't order yeah, pizza. Yeah, okay, next time, man. Next time. Dude, I used to buy you pizza all the time, dude. Then that one day, random, you fucking came through with like <laughs> a fucking pizza or something like that. It was. Remember uh, that one heart attack on a plate we got one night? It was like all meats, like whatever meats they had, we got all of it. Yeah, dude. yeah. We're like, let's just be ridiculous and put like every single. <laughs> there was like fucking anchovies. There was like fucking bison on there. It's like, <laughs> bison. like bi- bison bacon or some fucking random meat that they, they had they, on there. they brought us a heart attack in a box is what they brought Dude, us. it was like dripping like the bottom remember the bottom was already like <laughs> wet was. with grease we got yeah. it we're like maybe you shouldn't eat this and i did dude i felt sick after we ordered that pizza do you mm-hmm. remember that uh, i don't remember you. i, I remember uh, feeling gosh. sick i remember that pizza i remember that night <laughs> um anyway fucking tangent all right so uh yeah dude so i mean and it, Anyway, the technicals with Apple are pointing to a breakout. Who's to say what direction? Um, do you want to look at one of these other ones right now, or do you want to stay here on Apple? No, actually, can you do uh, one more? I want to look at uh, QQQ. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's 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 jump to that before we forget. I put it on my watch list. Anyway, but um, so there's real quick just to put a period here on Apple. There's there's going to be like uh, smaller lines of support and resistance that we need to pay attention to if we are trading a shorter time frame. If we were looking at this and we're looking at a four hour chart, right, um, there would be other things that we would want to consider. We would want to put like even smaller lines of support and resistance um in here you know there's key levels let's see right here at uh, about 117.70 which we're slightly above right now so tomorrow we like briefly we could see a return to 117.70 before it pumps up you know who's to say um when you have a, a wedge like that or if the price action is consolidated you start to see is it a signal to you well it's not quote unquote consolidating yet but. it's not as it's bouncing up and down. It's can, it's trend. Can, can I finish my question? Sorry, mother. <laughs> <laughs> can't get a Dude, word out. Uh, of, if you come on squawk out, you can't get a <laughs> you can't get a question out. <laughs> Dude, you got to be hey. aggressive, dude. I told you to wear your big boy <laughs> pants when you came to talk to the nerd. Dude. <laughs> okay, so for, whether it's Apple or whatever stock you're looking at, right? Mm-hmm. If if the price action is in consolidation or if it's in a wedge, whatever, if you start to see signs of lower highs and higher highs within that wedge. Wait, lower highs, higher, higher lows, higher lows, lows. and lower highs where you're getting. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand. I'm yeah. not trying to interrupt you. <laughs> 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 okay. Basically this, what we're looking at. Yeah. Well, so are you seeing higher lows in this wedge? I don't see that. So I'm seeing like yeah, if, you yeah. see, if you see higher lows, that would be a sign that it's going to break out and break up. It just means that the support, the, the, more... the support is climbing. Okay. Right. Okay. Here the support is climbing and the, and the resistance is dropping. This is a low. This is also a low. Right. Right. And, and it's getting higher as we go through time. So this is what we call higher lows. Right. Right here we have a high. We have another high right there, and we have another high right there. Each time that high is lower. So th- this is what we would call lower highs. So an uptrend is higher highs and higher lows. A downtrend is lower highs and lower lows. So does but that we, mean it's a downtrend? No, this any- is like an equilateral triangle. You know what I mean? It's a... Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a triangle. You're getting higher lows and lower highs progressively okay right so um when you get it like a triangle like this and it's equilateral meaning like it's not like like favoring a right angle with a flat bottom or you know something weird or it's like a wedge where it's taking place over a long period of time yeah whenever it's you know over you know a couple of months and 
it's equal. In other words, it's like a right angle triangle. Or you're getting like you draw. If you were to draw a line through that, and you have like equal degrees on top and bottom, that's an equilateral triangle, right? Uh, it might be like an acute triangle or two triangle. That's not important, but it's an equilateral triangle, which points to, uh, I believe in stocks, insecure, not insecurity, but uncertainty. So that, in other words, they're saying the price action is saying it could go up, it could go bottom, you know, down, or it could go up, it could go down. I'm not going to give you any more hints here. Okay. I Does think, that make sense? Yeah. I think we just like beat the hell out of Apple. So let's like jump into triple Q. Okay. I think we've beaten a dead horse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Moving right along. All yeah. right. So uh, what time frame do you want to look at? You're looking at buying the same thing over a couple years? Well, I have. I'm, I'm, when, when are you buying the yacht, Reggie? 15 years 15 years okay I'm, we gotta, I'm, I'm, we gotta I'm, go to the like yearly chart for that hey, listen, <laughs> we gotta like look up some books like some old books with dust on it man hey dust them off man i'll see the big picture dude i'm gonna shut the hey, fuck up you, hey why don't you take over for a little hey, bit take another drink take over <laughs> so here we go uh fucking what are you on the yearly <laughs> the we <laughs> the weekly i'm just zoomed out okay. so we're looking back to 2014 right i'm gonna talk slower for us non-technical people yeah yeah my bad please do so here is our high qq is topping out at about 300 bucks and i'm not gonna worry about the bottom because it's going back too far. oh dang did i say 118 earlier yeah i was I like I, don't, I was thinking of a different stock no, weren't we talking about Apple? We were talking about Apple when you said 118. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's QQQ. Well, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Well, somebody will fucking find out. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, so this is just like an uptrend forever. You know, whenever um, Bitcoin was in an uptrend like this, because it's starting to go parabolic, right? And basically parabolic means it's just like going up like too fast, like at a, at an unsustainable level. Um, damn, that's crazy. Whenever it like shoots up. So let me show you what I mean by like parabolic. So like if I draw like perfect support from here to there. Close enough. It doesn't it doesn't hold in other words like price starts like leaving that that realm right so yeah. what we do is we kind of come here we form a new kind of level of support oh, okay. gotcha. you know what i mean yeah that makes sense and you start saying using words like parabolic when it does shit like this you know what i mean so now or over the next couple of years, I could see QQQ getting really crazy. It might not, you know, it might respect this level. It seems like when we zoom in and we look at the four hour chart, what are you seeing right here? I see that it looks like it's still in an uptrend. Right go, here. It, but, it's, but it's testing. Look, it's te but look well, at the it, resistance. Look yeah. what's the resistance doing. The resistance is actually kind of coming down a little bit right and what happens near triangles breakouts breakouts yeah right so we could have a breakout to the downside that could be like a, a new line where it's going to be a new line of support if it breaks up or we don't know but yeah this could be new resistance if it, if it breaks out above 303 with volume you know what I mean? But yeah. but you're looking at the four hour QQQ over the next fuck. Over the next month could get really interesting. It's gonna be chill, I think. It's gonna be chill. Breaking out of this little triangle here is 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 gonna be important, but I'd say the level to look at is like three hundred and four bucks on the QQQ. Um 
You know what I mean? And and it could, again, same thing with Apple. You know what I mean? We could end up with another one of these. In which case, we would go back down, I think, relatively quickly. How much is that right there? That. Well, I'm not saying it's going to get all the way down to 186 bucks. Um, you know, it could run into some turbulence at 270. It could run into some more turbulence at 259. Um, and again, at 250. You know what I mean? It, it yeah. could hit these these little levels of, of resistance, previous levels of resistance and encounter them as support on the way down. I don't think that uh, it'll go much further than, I don't know, 167 if it does go down. But, you know, again, we can pull out our little trusty, rusty Fibonacci tool and look at the co what we would call the COVID recovery, I think, right? Because this goes back to April. That's COVID right here. You can see on the chart, Right. The price dropping pretty much of everything over those first few months of 2020. Yeah. And then we started our recovery. You know, now there's some turbulence. But we pull out our little Fibonacci tool. And as with all, like, as always, we go from our high. Try and get the magnet to zone in on this high. That's fucking good enough. Um, to our low. Okay. Something like that. And you can see basically right here, we're bouncing between like the one and the 618 and the 786. But if it breaks out above this line with volume, I'd say you could give it a year or two and uh, set your, your, your sell price somewhere around one... Because sometimes it'll, it comes back to these diagonal lines of resistance, right? And that's helpful because you can kind of extrapolate and say, well, you know, I'll start paying attention again in April, but, you know, and, and do some more analysis, like, you know, in the beginning of 2021, but sometime around 20, June of 2021, you know, is going to be that area where you're going to start thinking about selling. Definitely don't wait beyond July. But it could happen earlier, you know, it could happen in April or something like that, where we spike up. Certainly, if it continues to go parabolic, you might get in right now on QQQ and set a limit sell somewhere around 380. You know what I mean? Okay. Make 80 bucks out of it. Uh, gotcha. On, you know, per, per, per share. But, uh, but yeah, that's just... You know what you do it's real simple basically with price action it's simple you're looking at support you're looking at resistance sometimes that occurs in a horizontal sometimes it occurs on a diagonal but you look at both and then you learn how to use a fibonacci tool and that's pretty much it easy peasy yeah where people get mixed up is like oh well what about the indicators the indicators are all these things down here you know what about the relative strength index what about like the macd you know how does volume play into it should i bring up moving averages how important is the 200 how important is the 100 you know which i'm bringing up right now how important is the 50 day moving average so all of those are are uh, are significant it just it depends on what you're doing it depends on the time frame all that stuff because if you're trading long term you use the 200 um ma yeah, yeah, the MA is pretty solid. And it also depends on the vehicle, too. Some vehicles <clears throat> might respect the 21-day moving average more than the 34-day exponential moving average. You know, it just depends. Excuse me. What else do you want to... What, well, I guess we can move on. Did you want to take a quick look at Verizon? Yeah, we can go ahead and do that. They took a, um, last week they, uh, were doing real good. And then the past couple of days, they kind of took a dip, but I haven't had a chance to actually see or chart it. So it looks like, I think I've looked at this before. Damn. It looks, why does it look like that? I guess I, okay. So, oh, it's cause we looked at it before. Yeah. So let's look at, yeah, we did look at it before. Let's look at what I wrote <clears throat> last week. Was that last week that we talked about this? 
That, yeah, it was last week. Oh, okay, so price approaching all time highs, right? Uh, last major swing was bearish. I think we're talking about this right here because I was looking at the four hour chart. Um, watch news and hold till voluminous bullish trading above all time highs or trading near all time lows for buying. So maybe not it. In other words, I was looking at this big swing and thinking, oh, we're due either to break out above it, which would be less likely than us going down. So I think I was overall bearish on Verizon. But, you know, that could all change if we break out above the all-time highs with yeah. volume. Let's look at the four-hour real quick. Yeah, so see, it bounced off of this Fibonacci you know, this magical fucking number that we talked about. And it came down, bounced off of a Fibonacci in March. It's respecting all these Fibonaccis. Once we zoom in, we look at it, it almost goes to the fucking cent. You know, it's yeah. like exact or close to exact in a lot of instances. Um, but yeah, you know, like, I mean, yeah, it did jump. Uh, but it's going to struggle here at 62 bucks, in my opinion. You know, in that's, my that's the all time high, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Let's see. We zoom out. Yeah, 62. Oh, it's around 62 bucks. Yeah. So um, let's uh, let's move on. I think we had. Hold on. I'll, I'll unceremonious. Um. My bad. Uh, so let's. I think we had a few other things that I wanted to talk about. Did we already talk about uh, Quiver? Uh, we yeah we touched on it a little bit. Yeah. Um. So basically, uh, it tells you like what uh. What the what the what the representatives in Congress are trading, right? Yeah, it tells you the uh, day they made a trade. Um, I think it tells you the name of the comp. I think they tell you the name of the company. Uh huh. Um, but it tells it gives you um, kind of a, a stat on actually you can kind of grade and tell how good or how bad um your senator has been trading. Uh huh. Um. Yeah, well, I mean, we looked at it in detail, and uh, it seemed to. For a brief period of time, but we kind of looked at all of that, and it seemed to tell it was it was telling us what which representatives were trading what stocks, right? Which could be valuable, right? Because yeah. you're you're uh, you're kind of it's 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 something else like dark pools. Do you remember dark pools and all that shit coming out in the news in two thousand seven? Uh, I don't remember that. Like it's like uh like after hours trading. But like for whales and like oh, okay, I remember you telling me that last week. Yeah, yeah, he heavy hitters and stuff like that. So you know, uh, representatives are a certain kind of whale. You know, like they're information brokers. You know, and so it's not legal for them to use the information that they're getting, like secret information stuff. Right. But yeah, we know they do. But it's like we said, or I think you said last time. You know, they have somebody else doing their. Um, they're trading, trading too. For them, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of them have like what's called home offices, where like they have like their own little fucking fund with their own little traders working. Yeah, from. yeah, yeah. And there's like one, uh, like single family offices, I think they're called, and like multi-family offices, which is basically like either you know a fund for one family or you know a fund for several families. Um. Yeah, I think we already pretty much touched on everything that we were going to touch on. We're, we're, we're running up on an hour here. Did you have anything else that you wanted to include or anything that you wanted to cover? No, I think we touched on everything we were going to talk about. All right. So, yeah, uh, man. I appreciate your help, man. Dude, I, thank, thank you for coming on, man. I, yeah. I haven't I haven't really uh, like dug into uh, some of the finer aspects of like 
MACD and stuff like that. I, I wanted to cover it, but I know it, like, it can be dry. You know, it's just like TA and technical analysis has like so many components to it. it. It can get really dry really fast. And so you get that one guy in the room that's like really fucking excited about it. And it just ends up sounding like <laughs> fucking madness, dude. So I'm sorry about that. But um, I always had fun talking to you about it. And uh, I, dude, I, I guess I wish you luck with your, with your foray into stocks, man. That's, exciting thanks man i'll let you know when i get the yacht yeah um, dude i'll have you on dude <laughs> well uh or i'll just take my equipment dude we'll just fucking well we yeah, bro broadcast from the yacht nah dude that's all gonna be private label like, <laughs> only fans this is gonna be only, only fans, fans. <laughs> squawk out only fans <laughs> <laughs> all right so next episode we're gonna do uh only fans only with <laughs> reggie um all right man well um fucking kick this thing out uh guys uh bitcoin currently trading at around 15,637 it's 9 53 a few minutes away from 10 p.m here in san antonio texas on the 11th of november and a beautiful cool night out there do, do your homework what homework talking to the people listening do the your people? homework whoever's listening or watching do your homework before you spend all your money right on right on Dude, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to get my outro music to kick in and it's not working. So we're gonna have to put on a comedy <sighs> act now. Always something. You never have two things. At least match. it worked this time. Like last time we <laughs> we did our little uh run through, everything was like well, I guess that's why you have run throughs. All right. Um so I'm just looking for your song. I have a song that called Rampage Diet that I like for you. I don't know. Rampage? Rampage Diet. Diet? Watch out for FOMO. Don't, All right, guys, don't spend more than what you're willing to lose. The market is ruthless. Doesn't care. Damn, dude, this is not working today. Joel can't get his stuff working. I can't get it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a topic for another show. Dude, we need to have a show like that. Oh. Like, I got to loosen you up. We got to just, like, <laughs> stop talking about dry shit and just come on here and BS, dude. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right, man. That's it. Thanks for coming out for the fourth time. <laughs> Till next week. Later. Later. Goodbye. God bless.